Greetings everybody and welcome back to the Austin Lindsay channel. So I have another piece of gear to show you. This was sent to me by a company called We Light and this is a small COB light named the Ninja 300. This is an 80 watt daylight colored light and its color temperature is set to 5600 Kelvin. This can be powered by a Sony NPF batteries or the included power adapter. So what comes in the box? Well, first off, there's this carrying case which has a pretty rigid outer shell and it's got some inner dividers. Uh, the, the inner dividers are a little bit more flimsy and the Velcro has a little bit less grip than what you'd find on a Pelican system. But all in all, I'd say this case is really great. I'd say this case could stand up to a moderate amount of abuse. So in the case is the Ninja 300. There's a power cable, a removable NPF battery mount, a reflector, and a Bowens mount adapter along with a remote. This remote is a it's kind of a standard design remote. It seems like a lot of manufacturers just kind of create one remote style and that's what they include with every light they sell. So you can control anything on the remote that you can control in the light, but there's a lot of features such as the color changing options that do show up on the remote that don't show up with the light. So on the front of the unit, there's a one inch diameter LED chip and this puts out 550 lux at 1%. 6,850 lux at 50% and 13,850 lux at 100%. And this is with the reflector on. If you take off the reflector, you get 110 lux at 1%, 1,350 lux at 50% and 2,550 lux at 100%. And this is all at one meter. And surrounding that is a mount that looks just like a Bowens mount, but on a smaller scale. I'm calling this the We Light mount. I'm not sure if they'll be making their own line of modifiers or not, but this does come with a 5.5 inch reflector, and this has a mirrored surface that a lot of lights these days are coming out with. I like this style a lot because it has a more focused beam pattern. Uh, it makes you feel like you're getting a lot more light output since the internal squared pattern acts like little mirrors kind of focusing the lights uh, more so than a traditional reflector with a speckled interior. So coming back to the modifiers, if you do have a uh, Bowens mount modifiers, this comes with this little adapter. And the way this adapter works is you attach this to the light and then you place this on a light stand and then you attach your modifier or whatnot to the adapter. And the adapter does have an umbrella slot with a tightening screw. It also has a ratcheting handle. Uh, so you can angle your light while it's on the light stand. And I have to mention that this is made from plastic. It does feel a little bit cheap compared to how beefy the body and the yoke is made on the light. So I don't think this adapter will fare very well with some larger light modifiers. And I think this plastic will probably wear out uh, with a lot of setup takedown. Uh, but I do think if you use the adapter thoughtfully, you can make this last for quite a while. So while these adapters that sandwich between the light and the modifier are mostly a hassle, one benefit to them is that any of the weight from the modifier will be taken by the adapter and not the mount on your light itself. So if this does break, it's often easier to replace the adapter than it is to send the light in for repairs. So moving on to the back of the light, there's an LED screen, there's a dimmer knob, power input jack, a USB-C connector, and a mode button. So rotating the dial changes the intensity of the light or settings parameters. You can also use the knob to cycle through some of the modes as well. So the website claims stepless dimming, but I can clearly see steps when I rotate the dimmer wheel and when I'm using some of the included effects. I have a hunch that this is a pre-production unit. I'm not 100% sure, but that's one of the things that makes me think this could be. Pressing the M button, this is how you move from your main mode to your scene modes. And you can use the rotation of the dimmer wheel to change the values. You can also select different parameters by pushing in on the dimmer wheel. You can also do these things similarly on the remote by pressing and holding the M button and using the plus and minus keys and all that stuff. This video isn't really an instruction manual, but you don't need it. I know you'll figure out how to navigate it. So this light has a handful of the standard effects such as faulty bulb, lightning, fireplace, candle, and although this is a 56K color temperature, you could use gels to get different color tones. But honestly, like most lights with effects these days, um, these have the same noticeably repeating patterns. So while it's better than nothing, they're mostly unusable. All right, if you hold down on the M button for I think a second or so, it'll take you into where you can change your group or channel settings. 
and you can turn on Bluetooth, you can turn the fan on or off. Um, you'll also go here to perform any updates, which is what the USB-C port on the back of the unit is for. So this does state that it has a silent fan. I'm gonna turn this on because on my unit, the fan is actually quite loud. It has the loudest fan of any light that I own. And I did see another YouTuber who reviewed a unit and their fan appeared to be completely silent. So either their unit was shipped with the fan off and they didn't know that they could turn it on or this could be another reason why I suspect mine could be a pre-production unit. So I did turn my fan off and run it for about eight minutes at full power, 100%. So after about eight minutes, I noticed that the light output had decreased while the heat had increased, um, probably not to overheat the light, but the body was very hot to the touch. So I really wouldn't recommend running this for very long without the fan. I do, however, like that this unit has some of these useful sensors. Another example is when I'm running on battery power, the fan speed will decrease as I increase the power output. So I think it does this because the fan takes up a lot of battery power and just doing this will uh, conserve your battery over time. And with the battery mount on the light, you can use two, well, you have to use two NPF batteries for the correct voltage, otherwise it won't power on with just one. And from there, you can use this small cable, it goes from the adapter to the main input, and then you'll switch the power adapter to out, and then you turn the switch on on the back. And there is an on and off on the remote. You actually long press to turn the remote itself on, and then you short press, and that will turn the LED on or off, but the unit will stay powered on unless you use the actual on and off switch on the back. So there is a USB-C port on the bottom of the adapter and this will allow you to charge your batteries via the adapter with the USB-C cable. You have to move the switch from the out position to the in position to take in electricity. So this means you can't charge the batteries while using the light, but this still is a super handy feature that basically turns the light's adapter into a duo NPF battery charger. And there's also this cool LED on the display that'll show you your battery power levels as they charge. So here's why I'm excited about this light. I actually really love the idea of having a COB light that's this small and actually is Bowens mount capable and can also be powered by batteries. I was actually excited about using this light to replace my main uh, light for my current setup, but as it is, the fans are just too loud for this type of setting. But I do think this would be a great light for run and gun situations where fan noise maybe is somewhat less important or maybe I could use this as a secondary light for odd spaces like a car interior or suction cup to the outside of the car maybe. I could use it handheld in a moving scene. So for me, having a COB light this small really opens up a lot of possibilities. So if you guys do have any questions, leave them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks everyone for watching.